thanks everyone for joining this talk. So my name is Sergio. Um, and this talk is going to be about uh, how to design uh, an embedded analytics device um, based on OS3 with Yocto. Um, before we start, um, just a little bit about myself. So I'm located in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I've been designing embedded software for several years from uh, small microcontroller-based projects to big uh, multi-processing systems with embedded Linux. Um, I have a company here in Brazil. I'm doing several trainings per year. And um, part of the last year, I joined Teradex, um, a Switzerland-based company that uh, that builds uh, system modules. And, and here I'm leading a, a team that is developing Horizon Core, that is an embedded Linux distribution for our modules um, that uh, that is based on OS3. So I've been with using OS3 for a, an year or so. And uh, the idea of this talk is to discuss a little bit about this technology and how we leverage OS3 to, to build and, and maintain an embedded Linux uh, distribution with the Octo. So uh, I, I, I'm also a, a, a contributor to a few uh, open source projects and uh, I have a blog where I write some technical stuff there. So yeah, um, let's start our agenda for this talk. I want to start with a, a, an introduction on OS3, the technology. What is OS3? What is it for? Um, I'm going to discuss a little bit about what is booting a system with OS3 because it's, it is really different. Um, and uh, how can we build uh, an OS3 based system with a meta updater? That's the layer um, to work with OS3. And uh, I'm going to also talk a little bit about updates or remote updates because that's one of the great advantages of working with um, an OS3 based system. So. Um, we have 30 minutes for the talk. Uh, let's see. I prepared some uh, demonstrations, some hands-on during the talk. Let's see what we can do during these 30 minutes. Um, let's start with uh, um, some um, terminologies and um, discussions about the technology. So what is OS3? OS3, I would say that OS3 is a kind of framework to version control a binary file. That's very, a very general description, like, right? Uh, it is also called the libos 3 because it is just a library that you could like leverage in your project. Um, but it is really much more than that. It's a kind of Git-like um, uh, tool uh, uh, where you have a repository of files and you can commit files to this repository. You can check out files from the, the repository. You can create branch. You can have remotes. You can pull from remotes the object. So really brings this uh, view of Git to um, uh, the management of file system trees. Um, so in a, in a sense, it is very similar to Git. Uh, like um, you have uh, an object store with files there. They are checksummed, uh, although uh, OS3 uses SHA-256, uh, not SHA-1. Sha um, we, we, we can commit, we can check out. Um, but in a sense, it's also very different from Git. Uh, for example, the files, um, they are not compressed. Um, they are checksummed, but they are not compressed in the repository. When you check out in Git, you basically create a copy of the, the content of the, the objects in the repo in a working directory. Um, now with, uh, with OS3, you don't, do not create this copy. Uh, hard links are created to the objects in the repository, so it's pretty much different. Um, and there, there are some impacts on this. We're going to talk discuss about this later. Um, and uh, yeah, OS3 is developed by a, a Red Hat developer, Colin, Colin Waters, um, that is responsible for a few uh, open source projects out there. And there are a few um, Linux distributions that are based on, on OS3. For example, the, the Fedora um, flavors, CoreOS, uh, Silverblue, and IoT. I've been using, for example, Fedora Silverblue for, for several months, and I'm really enjoying the way it works, the way it is stable with OS3. Um, as I mentioned, I, I, I've been working at Toradex to develop Horizon Core, an open source Linux solution that is built with Yocto, uh, that is built on, on OS3. And there are also a few uh, what we usually call the hybrid package management systems like RPM OS3 and Flatpak. They are both um, OS3 based. 
So in a nutshell, in just one slide, because we don't have much time here, um, OS3 is really a, a, a Git-like con content addressed object store. So you start objects there, you can retrieve objects from there. Uh, you can commit, um, you can check out, you can create branches, um, but it goes beyond this. Um, it is really designed to make it possible to maintain uh, file system trees where you can boot from different um, from all of those file system trees. So it really has this integration with bootloaders. So when you uh, check out a file system tree to boot it from there, uh, it will do the necessary configuration in the system, like changing bootloader files, so you can boot it from there. We're going to see that the terminology is not exactly checking out. We we usually use it deploying. Uh, so when you deploy a new version of your file system, it will check out a, a, a version of the system plus changing the system to boot it from from there. And um, and OS3 is basically a library with uh, a few common line tools. And I'm gonna uh, in the this first end zone, I'm gonna show uh, a little bit about uh, how OS3 works, just for us to 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 um, understand better what is what is OS3. So hopefully you all can see my terminal. If not, just just let me know. Um, Looks great. Looks good. Thank, thank you. Um, so I'm here in my development machine. So I have OS3 installed here. I'm just gonna show uh, a little bit of the, the CLI. Uh, so I'm gonna create a, a repo with OS3 and I'm gonna do it fast, right? Because we don't have much time uh, in this talk. So I'm gonna create a repo with OS3 and in a directory called repo, we can see the contents of this empty repo here. It looks, Looks like a Git repo, right? There are some differences, but uh, it's pretty much like a, a Git repo with objects and wraps. Um, I'm gonna create now a, a, a root FS directory with a file there, call it hello.txt. And then I'm gonna commit this file to the repo just for us to see what's going to happen. So, so I'm committing, this is my repo, I'm committing in this branch. So I'm also creating a branch called v1. This is the subject of the commit, and I'm committing the files inside this directory. So I have my commit hash there. Let's see now what the repo looks like. So now we have four uh, objects. I'm also not going much deeper into the, the uh, internals of these objects, but uh, just as a general explanation. So we have wraps that basically point to a commit, pretty much like Git. And a commit uh, basically points to two objects, uh, a dear meta, in our case is the, the root of the directory, and plus a, um, a, sorry, a dear tree, that's the root of the directory, and a dear meta that store attributes of files inside that directory. One of the differences between OS3 and Git is that OS3 is able to store full attributes and extended attributes, that Git's not able to do that. And that's also very nice. So if you are working, for example, with SC Linux or any other technology that use extended attributes, you'll be able to store it in a OS3 repository. And here we have the file that I committed. And we can see, I can even catch this file, repo objects. Um, so this is the hash of the file. We can see that the content of the file is there. So this is, this is the file, it's not, um, compressed or anything like this. Very nice. Um, uh, now I'm gonna be clear here. Now I'm gonna remove, now that you have the objects in the repo, I don't need it. I, I can at the meantime recover, right? And I can do this right now. So I'm gonna do now our check out of this. So OS3, my repo, check out the branch, and the destination. So now I, I, I can get back the files from, from the repo. So pretty much like it, you commit, you check out, very nice. And of course, um, we can do this with full complete um, file system trees, right? I'm gonna do this right now. So I have here a, a, a root file system, a root dot tar um, um, compressed file with my complete 
input file system tree there. I'm gonna uh, decompress here in my machine, and then I'm gonna commit this uh, file system tree um, in the same branch. I'm gonna generate another commit. It's gonna take a little bit more time because we have several files there, but this is too fast. Um, I'm gonna do another change and commit again. So now we have three uh, commits in this. You can see here we have three commits in this uh, repository. V1, V2, V3, uh, the V1, just that hello file, V2, the complete file system three, V3 with a, a change, at, a, 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 an extra file in slash etc. And um, we can manage pretty much like we would manage with Git, right? I can do, for example, GIFs in the repo. So let's let's GIF the two commits. Let's GIF this commit with this one. And we can see that the difference between these two commits is the addition of this file. So this is um, OS3 in a nutshell, very fast. So just for us to know how it works. Very nice. Now is the complicated part because it seems simple, right? To manage those files inside a repo, you can commit, check out, check the differences, uh, version contour, everything. That's very nice. Now, you want to boot your system with OS3. Now there are a few more, I would not say a few, but several um, aspects of your system that you need to take care of. Uh, first, when you think about an embedded Linux device, you have your root file system, you save the root file system a partition in your storage device, then you configure uh, the kernel via parameter, root parameter to mount it, and, and that's it, right? Um, but now with OS3, what happens that your root file system is inside a repository, and the bootloader and the kernel do not understand OS3. That's one important thing. All of the OS3 implementation is done uh, at user space, not at kernel space. So the kernel doesn't understand anything about OS3, doesn't know how to mount an OS3 based system. So you need, you need help from the user space part. And we're gonna see that you're gonna uh, have a, a, a script in the run disk to prepare, set up, and mount uh, an OS3 based system. So how that, how that works in general. Um, when you build the system, we're gonna have basically two directories, uh, one called boot and one called OS3. In the OS3 directory, you're gonna have the repo. So inside there, you're gonna have a, a, a repo directory with your um, repository. And there you can have multiple commits of your file system. Um, every commit is a bootable version of, of your system. And then there is an operation that is executed um, that is called deploy, that will basically uh, check out a version based on the, the commit that you're using or the, the branch that you're using to, to deploy, um, that will check out the files from the repository and prepare the system to boot from it. Um, and all of this is, should be done when you generate the image. So you when you generate the image, um, if you are doing with Yocto, that's our uh, focus here, you're going to have to prepare all of this, right? So after you generate the root file system, you're going to have to commit to S3 repo. And after that, you're going to have to create this structure of directories and deploy a, a version of your file system uh, using OS3, the OS3 some command line tool. So uh, it will create the, 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 it will create the deployment uh, with the files to boot uh, your system. The, the, the deployment directory has this structure. And I think it's even better to look at this diagram here to understand better how this works. So we have in the left, we have the view from the storage device. And on the right, we have the view at runtime after the system is booted. So after the system is booted, you have the view, of course, of your root file system with all of the directories there. But in the storage device, it's pretty much different. So again, we have here two directories, boot and OS3. In the OS3 directory, we have the repo, the OS3 repo, right? So um, when uh, you are generating the image, you're going to run the deploy uh, command that will create a deployment. That's basically this directory here. 
And here we have the commit. That's basically the hash of the, the version of the, the, your, your file system. And all of your file system tree here. Um, the next step of the deployment will be create, copy the files needed to boot the system, like kernel image, device trees, uh, the hand disk image, and changing the bootloader configuration to boot from it. OS3 will do all of this for you. Um, and that, that's basically the main idea when you are developing the system and building the image that is based on, on OS3. Now at boot time, at boot time is, what, what is going to happen at boot time? So when you boot, of course, um, it depends on the bootloader we are using. So I'm assuming here we are using U-Boot because that's uh, what you, we usually use uh, on ARM-based devices, but could be Grub. So uh, OS3 is compatible with both Grub and um, and U-Boot. So U-Boot will um, run a boot script that is your responsibility to write, that will load a configuration file that is kind of maintained by OS3 with some environment variables there uh, that will point to the correct files for you to boot. So when you do a deployment, OS3 will copy the, 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 the kernel files, like kernel, device tree, run disk, et cetera, and will set up some variables here in this file so the bootloader can read it and know what is the um, operating system that I should boot right now. It's going to be inside the variables file in this in this uh, configuration file from the boot. Of course, if it is grub, it's going to be the grub configuration files. And then you boot will load the, the kernel, uh, device tree, and hand disk, load to memory, and boot the kernel that will do is its initialization. And then in the end, it will call the run disk. And in the run disk, you're going to have a, a script that will do the rest of the boot process. Basically. That is a parameter that is also set up by um, OS3, uh, a kernel uh, argument that is used, that will be used by the hand disk script to identify the correct deployment. And then it will bind mount this um, directory as your root file system. And then switch to it. But before that, it will also bind mount a few other directories. And when we look at the um, file system tree of an OS3 based system, we're going to see that most of those directories, they are empty. They will be links or they, they are links to directories inside the slash user or they will be like bind mount points um, to other directories. Uh, but they are mostly empty. So, for example, Bing is empty. Uh, oh, sorry. Bing is a link to user Bing, um, uh, as lib is a link to user lib, as sbing is a link to um, user sbing. Um, so, an OS3 based system should comply with the OSR move um, uh, definition. So, everything should be inside the slash user. All of the operating system components should be inside the slash user. And there is one reason for that, because the slash user is byte mounted read only, and you cannot change it. So um, when you work with OS3, you are really like designing um, uh, an immutable system or a system that's almost immutable. You cannot change the components of the operating system um, because all of the files inside there are basically hard links to the objects in the repo. So if you change a file there, you're going to corrupt an object in the repo, so you cannot change it. So if I cannot change the file there, how can I uh, store data in my device? How can I change the configuration? So there are two directories there that, that are really um, designed for that. Uh, the var directory, the idea of the var directory is to store a runtime data. So all of the runtime data will be, will be there. So that's why, for example, the home directory is usually um, by mounted in var root the home directory. So that's where your home will be inside var. Um, and other directories that you need to store like databases, logs, and, and things like this. And the other directory that is special in your 3 is the etc, 
that is where you store the configuration data. So when you do a new deployment with OS3, it, OS3 will do what they call a three-way merge. It will take the, the ETC from the last deployment, the ETC from the new deployment that you are doing update, and the ETC that you change it. You merge the tree and we'll create a new ETC. Um, and that means if you do any changes in slash ETC, your changes will be kept in a new uh, deployment. But okay, so is, user... uh, go ahead, sorry. Is uh, ETC then where you would have persistent? Is that if you needed a persistent data, is that where you would put it? ETC and VAR, yeah. Uh, usually ETC, we store um, OS configuration data, like for example, networking configuration. Um, now databases, um, everything that's application related, we usually use slash VAR. We can see here that slash VAR, it's outside the deployment directory. That means it is kept between deployments. So when you create a new deployment, the slash VAR will be reused. It will be kept, right? Um, so slash VAR and slash TC are both kept between deployments, but the usage are different. VAR for runtime data created or used by applications and uh, slash TC configuration files for the base operating system. Okay. Does OS tree support fail-safe updates? Exactly. It supports fail-safe updates because everything is a hard link. So um, I'm going to, maybe I, I can discuss this a little bit more in the end of the presentation because I have a slide about this. But yes, okay. the, the quick question is, yes, it, it is atomic. The update is atomic. All right. Uh, one more question. Um, is it possible to use Meta Updater and then somehow host your own OS tree archive? Yes, yes. So that is a variable in Meta Updater where you can point to uh, where your repo is. So, um, and it will do the commits there. So, yeah, you pretty much can do this. And um, like I was about to show this in my environment here and um, how that would work, yeah. So maybe since we have just a few minutes before the end of this presentation, and uh, one of the, the, the nice things about um, OS3 is the, the update system, right? I can I can discuss a little bit about how, how this works. Um, so basically the second hand zone, I already talked about how, how this works, the booting part works. Now, if you want to integrate OS3 um, with um, an abandoned device, that is a, a, a little bit of work, right? To make it um, bootable because uh, you have to design the partition the right way with, with the correct um, directories. And then you, you need to run some OS3 commands. Uh, you need to commit to a repo. You need to do the deploy. Um, you need to prepare the bootloader to read the correct variables from the configuration files to boot the system from the correct deployment. So all of this must be done. And MetaPdator, the objective of MetaPdator is exactly to make that easier for you. It's not that you can just in easily integrate with your BSP. Um, there is some integration work there. And it is very well documented. Um, it is very well documented here. Um, I am pointing to links. Um, to uh, a description of how that can be done. In, but it's really well documented in the um, HeroT um, website. This is the company behind uh, the development of Meta Data. It's really well documented. There is not much work to do this. Um, you basically have to set, need to set, set up some variables and create a, a, a script, a, 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 an image class, or, or a weak configuration file to, to create our image. But it's not that much work to integrate with, with Meta Updater. And um, one of the big advantages um, of the of OS3 is really in the update um, um, on remote updates. So when we think about the remote update, and again, we don't have much time to go over all of the, um, the, the ideas and approach to do updates on Linux. And there are full presentations out there about this. Um, but we can at least separate in two different approaches, right? You can have a kind of package-based or application-based update system, or you can have a, a full partition-based update system. And both of them can have kind of trade-offs, right? One is more reliable, the other is more fast or uses less storage. And when we look at OS3, we can see that 
we kind of can have both of both the best of both worlds because we can combine the robustness of uh, a partition based system uh, because the full update operation is um, atomic. Um, I can explain why um, it's really, really atomic. All of the operation happens if we look at that diagram um, again. So, what is updated? You're going to pull new objects from the repo, from the repo, right? And when you do this, you are not changing the current the current system. So everything happens at runtime um, without stopping your system. <clears throat> After that, you create a new deployment, and again, you are not changing the current deployment. So if for some reason you will stop in the middle. It's no problem, right? Because when you try again, you're going to pull the objects again or do the deployment again. So there's no problem on stopping the middle of the update. Um, and then after that, uh, the last operation is change the position of the configuration. And this is done in a way that it is atomic, right? So it changes the file in, uh, with another name and then just rename the file in an atomic way. Um, and then you just need to reboot it. So uh, all of the, the, the complete update operation is, is really is really atomic. Um, and that's part of the design of, of OS3. Um, I have one, uh, one final, um, I, here we have a few uh, advantages of using um, OS3 as an update, as a, a technology to, to update the system. It is atomic. It is delta-based, so that's nice. You, you transfer only the objects that has changed in the repo. You can do it on the fly, so you don't need to stop the system to do the update. Um, you can do it over HTTP. So you can, uh, I'm gonna quickly show this here on my machine. Uh, you can just export the repo over HTTP and then uh, pull the objects from there. You can sign, the, there is not much security around OS3, so you, if you really need security, you have to, to build a system around it. Uh, here at Redex, we use Actualizer, that's a update system um, that's built uh, on top of uh, one of the technologies that Actualizer uses um, is OS3. Um, but uh, there is some kind of security around OS3. For example, you can um, sign commits and sign deltas. Um, and check for signatures. So you can have some kind of authenticity check during the update process. Um, I'm go I'm go I want to go over quickly go over the last um, uh, hands-on here to show how the, the update would work. So I have here in my machine um, Trison Core running, our distribution uh, running on our our um, modules, and uh, I have here. Um, a build environment. So this is my build environment, the off to build environment. Um, and uh, I have done here two builds, um, one without Netcatch and one with Netcatch. And uh, my repo is in the deploy directory. So my repo, my, my OS2 repo is there. By, this is kind of uh, a default. Um, so my this is my repo. One I think is that uh, when I do incremental builds, I can do diffs in the repo and see what has changed. Some, somewhat looks like the or it's similar to the the Git history, right? That you have to provide, um, and I can uh, I can for example compare like I have I am comparing here two commits, and I can see uh, in this repo uh, what changes from these two comments is the addition of the netch catch uh, tool. And then what I can do, I can go to the repo directory. So this is my repo story. I can expose, expose it over HTTP. Then I can go to the device. In the device, I can add my machine as a remote. So I can check here that now my machine, I'm calling this remote horizon, and this is my machine. Um, I can I can check the the reps that I have in this remote. Uh, this is the naming that we use in, in, in Horizon Core. Um, major version, machine, distro, and image. Um, and then I can pull objects from there. So here I'm going to pull uh, the objects that change it uh, in this uh, specific uh, ref from from this remote. So this is the remote Horizon, and this is the ref branch there. And and then I can uh, I can check the logs. 
I can see that I have that I have two commits there. I can also check that uh, here in my machine I'm running the first one, 63A1, right? And uh, if I want to switch or update to this second commit to the second version of my file system, I can do a deploy operation. So I can run here OS3 admin deploy, and I want to deploy the top of this branch, right? That has this new commit. Should take a few seconds. Again, here it's checking out the version. It's doing a, a merge of the slash etc. And it is preparing the, the boot files kernel device tree and switching the bootloader uh, variables to boot from it. Now I can check again the way my OS3 status. I can see that I'm booting from here, but this is pending because I have just done uh, the deploy. So now if I reboot the device, um, the next time I boot it, so now I don't have netcat. Now if I reboot the device, uh, it's going to boot to using this new deployment and I'm going to have a netcat there. So the update operation is pulling objects and deploying it in the, in the operating system in an atomic way. Just to finish the presentation, OS3 is very nice, but yes, it adds uh, uh, complexity to the system. And of course, you need to comply to its requirements, like designing a system with a slash user, with everything inside slash user. So you're going to probably need to use uh, the distro feature USR merge to make sure that everything inside slash user and, um, and a few other um, things that you need to do to make sure that slash user really is uh, immutable, read-only, and you have uh, everything there. I guess that's it. My time is up. Um, hopefully um, you enjoyed this presentation. Some links here and I'm open to questions here or on Slack if needed.